Well, welcome back to the channel, my friends. I got to tell you guys, last month, I took the CompTIA Pen Test Plus exam and I failed. But then two weeks later, I took the exam for a second time and I failed. But then I took the test again for a third time just last week and I passed. So in this video, let's break down each one of these exams, talk about things nobody else will, the good, the bad, the ugly, and expose some secrets. So let's break down what happened on each exam. So the first exam I signed up for was the Pen Test Plus 002. And all I used to study with was the official Pen Test Plus study guide, which was actually a pretty good read, to be honest with you guys. It goes over a ton of good information about tool selection for pen testers and hackers. And it goes over like planning and scoping, information gathering, vulnerability scanning, coding. So really good read. I skimmed through it and I did the review questions with scoring like an 80, 80, whatever, 70, 80%. Maybe like a 40 in some areas, 40 in some areas, but whatever. Scheduled the exam, no sweat, wanted to see if I could pass it. And I got close, but I didn't pass it. I scored a 715 out of 750. The dragon drops did throw me off on a few of them. I didn't understand what was going on with them. Scheduled the exam soon as I failed for two weeks later. And my study material only consisted of Google which probably wasn't the best idea. So on Google, who knew that you could find free practice exams? So of course, I look at the practice exams and I'm like, oh my gosh, these are the same questions that were on my exam and my eyes go crazy. So I do these practice exams, feeling pretty good, sit down and take the test. The second test was the same test that I took the first time. So I'm like, I know these now. And I knocked that test out in 15 minutes. And then I hit the submit button and I failed. I actually did a lot worse the second time by using Google than I did the first time. So I go back to the drawing board and I decide that I'm gonna study for this exam. And I grabbed a second book, which was the all-in-one. It goes over great material in a different type of style than the Pen Test Plus study guide. They kind of talk about the same things, but in different ways. And they merge together like a great marriage. And then I wasn't feeling confident enough. So I signed up to watch some Jason DM videos. My heart and to be honest with you guys, you can see up here that I didn't even get through all the videos because I already scheduled the exam and it was coming close to the test date. So with all that, I sat down for the third exam, but this exam was the pen test plus 001. And I sat down for the exam, the drag and drops, conveniently the same drag and drops from the previous two exams, but the rest of the questions were completely different and I was not expecting that. But what I did was I eliminated the wrong answers right off the bat. After each question, I didn't look for the right answer. I looked for all the wrong answers, got rid of those, and then I was able to narrow it down between one or two answers. And CompTIA loves to put similar answers in the question to make you fight for which one do they want you to use? Do they want you to use Burp Suite or do they want you to use ZA Proxy? Or maybe they just want you to use Nmap, who knows? But the best way is to eliminate the wrong answers and then fight in your brain for which answer is the right one. And then the second thing I noticed is that the Pen Test Plus exam is all over the map with questions. They want you to think sometimes like a pen tester. And then sometimes they want you to think as a blue teamer. And then sometimes they want you to think like a CISSP manager. What mindset are you in for each question was different. Whereas when you take the certified ethical hacker, it's 
strictly hacking questions and strictly one mindset and frame of thinking and nothing else. The Pentest Plus exam pulls from so many different areas, throws all these weird questions in and then shoots it out and says, here you go. And it's up to you to decipher what kind of answer they're looking for. But the exam is meant to be passed. Things you need to study for the exam, Python, Nmap scripting, post exploitation techniques, how to use a reverse shell, which tools are vulnerability scanners, which tools hack Wi-Fi, how to read an Nmap output, which attacks are cross-site scripting, which attacks are SQL injection, uh, which attacks are blind-based SQL injection, time-based SQL injection, which attacks are DOM-based cross-site scripting, which attacks are reflected cross-site scripting, which attacks are local file inclusion, the difference between whaling and spear phishing, vulnerability scanning for ICS systems, and the delicacy of doing that. Certificate vulnerabilities on websites was a big one. Know what an SOW is, what an NDA is, and what are ROEs. Know what Aircrack NG does. It's meant to collect IVs or your initialization vectors and WPA handshakes. And just know your comfortability with using everything in pen testing and in hacking because this is an entry level exam. They don't expect you to go in depth with your knowledge. Try to keep it very surface level. Don't go in depth. Don't read into the questions. Don't read into the answers and try to pick the best one. So with the pen test plus exam, you can look at jobs as a pen tester, a security analyst, a vulnerability assessment analyst, a network security analyst, or just a security consultant. So if you're striving for the Pentest Plus, that projected growth is about 31% from back in 2019 up to 2029. The salary range is roughly between 76,000 and 100,000 based on salary.com, but it also depends a lot on the employer and the role and the experience and how many years you have. So good luck with your studying guys. Check out as much material as you need to feel comfortable for the exam. Be careful what's out there on Google. I don't see any harm in looking at Google and getting an idea of what the exam is like, but don't use that information as pure knowledge. Study for the exam and don't blow through it. Read each question, drill out the wrong answers, and then good luck at deciding which is the correct answer. Hit me up if you need any help. Hit me up if you have any specific questions. Don't just troll the channel, guys. Go ahead and subscribe to it. Good luck on your exam, and I'll see you guys out there on the hunt.